Why should we read G.R. Elton's work? Elton's work represented a complete change in the way we looked at uh, the Tudor age. Uh, because Elton came from the outside, he came from a, a great Germanic academic tradition, arrived as a, a young man fleeing the Nazis, and took England to his heart, very much England, not Britain, uh, and felt that here was the country that had saved it and became passionately interested in its history, and brought all that Germanic rigour to the way that he researched and so England under the Tudors had a very different feel in the 1950s from the history which went before. It was affectionate towards the, the notion of England, but it also uh, took a, a markedly independent way of seeing the whole picture. Why did his work have the impact it did? There really wasn't much competition at the time. Uh, there were old textbooks and there were grand, grand old men of the subject. Sir John Neal, who was uh, Elton's supervisor, for instance, had written uh, what is still a wonderful biography of Elizabeth I. Behind him there was A.F. Pollard. But th there was no one fresh or interesting at the time working in the field in the way that Elton uh, changed the field. I mean, his impact in Cambridge when he got his lectureship there in the 50s was remarkable. Uh, basically, he put in the shade everyone who was working on the English Reformation. What led to Elton writing England under the Tudors? In many ways, the book is a logical consequence of his first monograph, we could call it, his first great book of uh, work of research, which was The Tudor Revolution in Government. Uh, this is an extraordinary work because it, it's a detailed, uh, archive-rich analysis of sources in a way that no predecessor book had done. And so it sprang out of that. Uh, it uh, was only published, uh, I think, two years later. And it's already got uh, an incisiveness and a freshness, and it's got a hero. You know, it's got Thomas Cromwell. That's the e extraordinary thing about the work, that it, it, it's Cromwell-centred. And the whole picture of the Tudor age uh, is, is illuminated by that, or I might say perhaps distorted by that. What makes England under the Tudors a classic? The reason it should be seen as a classic is that uh, there was nothing quite like it before and it has stimulated discussion and disagreement ever since. There are still traces of that book uh, as you look anywhere in the discussion of the Tudor age among historians at the present day. So it needs to be out there and people need to encounter it and, and the extraordinary tone of the book, that precision, uh, impatience with uh, idiocy, one might say, uh, and also the mistakes are tremendously creative and interesting. What was the reaction to it at the time of publication? It was received uh, with a great deal of respect and interest. There were those who of course challenged the Tudor revolution in government side of it uh, and there was a, uh, a very fruitful and prolonged controversy about whether Elton was right uh, and uh, his opponents scored lots of palpable hits. But this is a book you talked about uh, and it, it went on to be the standard textbook. It was when I was a, a schoolboy in the 1960s and it continued so into the 70s and its, its last reprint was uh, in 1990. Uh, when Elton was an old man and gracefully changed his mind on some things, but not on the central principle. What has the continuing impact of the book been? The great thing about the book is that it puts Thomas Cromwell on the middle of the stage in the early Tudor period, and that uh, I think every subsequent piece of research on the Tudor period has proved to be right. Uh, Elton knew the archive better than anyone else at the time, and better than most people to the present day. Uh, I, I've been through the same material, and I'm just astounded by his perception, his sense of detail, what he notices. He's not always right, but you get the feel of a historian who's rolled his sleeves up and is looking at the sources and letting them speak. Often, as with all of us, he will find what he wants to find, but he is he swayed, he's shaped by what's there. Do you think it will continue to be important? We won't be able to ignore 
England under the Tudors. There are things about it which are perverse and now discredited. I think if you look at the Mary chapter, it's worth reading for how wrong it is. And you put it side by side with Eamon Duffy's work now, uh, the work of all sorts of historians on, on the reign of Queen Mary. Um, I think of jo John Edwards's work on Cardinal Poole, for instance. All of them show that Elton was wrong on that because for once he'd not examined his own assumptions. He'd taken the thoughts of the uh, generation of historians above him in England who in many wa ways he despised and, uh, and uh, fought against, but not on Mary. So that's, that's interesting, interesting wrongness. Uh, on uh, King Edward as well, Mary's half-brother, uh, he, he's also very dismissive that the problem is that, that the book is structured around Cromwell and then around the reign of Elizabeth, which is sort of the working out of Thomas Cromwell. And so Edward and Mary got in the way, but it's a fascinating uh, mistake uh, and it's, it's worth playing with and it's certainly worth reading.